The offensive cylinder rule will be a major change this coming season. The men's rules committee has made it adamant they want the defense to back off. They want the offensive player to be allowed to turn to either pass, start a shot, or begin a dribble. This does not mean the offensive player can change pivot feet or pivot into the defender. However, when the feet are stationary and the offensive player tries to go side to side, either at chest level or high or low, he must be given a ball's width area to do this. He cannot extend the ball straight out in front of him to do this, but as long as he has bent elbows with the ball at chest level, he is allowed to turn side to side and not have contact with the defender. If contact with the defender occurs, even if initiated by the offense, this is a defensive cylinder foul. The rules committee says the defense must back off. In play one, after the rebound, the player in white maintains the basketball at chest level. The defensive player in the dark uniform closes the space and straddles the leg of the offensive player, not allowing him to turn at the waist to lift the basketball to pass at this point. When contact occurs, even though the offense initiates with his shoulder, this is a defensive cylinder foul. Play two is another example of a defender closing the space, not allowing the offensive player to turn from the waist to pass the basketball. Contact occurs with the shoulder. Last year, this wasn't even called a foul, but the rules committee says this must be called. At this point, the white is legal, but when he steps forward the right foot and the offensive player initiates contact with his shoulder, a defensive foul must be called. Play three is an example of a help defender who closes a space and illegally causes contact with the offensive player. The help defender, when he comes down, must allow the offensive player ball space in front of him to turn at the waist. He closes and straddles his leg, causing the offensive player on the pivot to make contact. In this play, however, we would also have a flagrant one foul on the offense. Even though we will not allow the defensive player to close the space and prevent turning, when turning occurs and contact happens above the shoulders with an elbow, we will have a defensive cylinder foul followed by an offensive flagrant one foul. Players must still pivot with elbows in and down. Play four is an example of a trap defense where illegal cylinder contact occurs. The offensive player ends his dribble, makes a pivot on his left foot. The def help defender then comes and straddles his left leg, not allowing the offensive player to turn around to make the pass. When contact occurs, this must be a defensive cylinder foul. The defense must give ball's width at chest level, high or low, for the offensive player to release a pass. This is a defensive cylinder foul. The final play is an example of legal defense that the offense goes outside of his cylinder to cause contact. This is how the rules committee wants the play. The defender initially starts from behind the offensive player. As the player turns to the side, he leans forward with his left shoulder and arm creating the contact. The defender has not straddled the leg and is allowed ball's width if necessary to turn. This contact by the offensive player is not only an offensive foul, it is a flagrant one foul because the contact occurs above the shoulders leading with the elbow. Offensive players again must learn to pivot with their elbows down.